Most believers don't want to lead another person astray just as much as they don't want to wrongfully label another born-again believer as a heathen. I woke up with this on my mind. Let's talk about it. We gotta be patient with each other, not jump into conclusions about people's salvation because the false teacher shares many of the same characteristics as the born again believer that holds an improper understanding or teaching of scripture. They heard a message from the pulpit or elsewhere and they're repeating that message on the merit of the understanding of the one who taught them the message. So they get the message and repeat it to others who then repeat it to others and before you know it, you have a whole institution full of improper doctrine that you think is accurate because you didn't confirm the teachings for yourself in the Bible. I would encourage everyone to read the Bible from front to back because sadly, and I don't say this with an intent of contention or to pick a fight, but the pulpit as well as the institutional church has become a very dangerous place for many, especially for new believers. Y'all don't act like y'all don't see what's going on in the church. And no disrespect intended, even though what I'm about to say will come across as disrespectful, but it seems like a lot of pastors care about the hooping and the entertainment more than the doctrine. But the hooping gotta be helping. And at this point, the hooping then turned into straight up theatrics. I saw a clip the other day of a pastor ziplining in the air during the service across the congregation. Get off that zip line and teach the word of God. I don't know whose idea it was to make the pastor of the church turn into Iron Man or better yet, Iron Preacher, but so many people don't even know what the gospel is and they got Pastor Deacon Smith Jones flying across the ceiling. And not to mention, it looked like he got stuck up there and was spinning around in circles. And examples like this are running rampant in the church today. So don't act like you don't see what's going on. And I don't know what many of them teach. That's not my point. I just see people kicking the Bible across the stage, pouring barbecue sauce on the Bible. And I'm like, what in the world is going on over there? I get it. We're all human. We all make mistakes. We've all been tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine at some point in our Christian life. But how many 10% tithes have you given with the understanding that it was mandatory only to find out that you're supposed to give freely from your heart without compulsion. I got another video on this if you want to check it out later on. However, our words to each other matter and we got to stop treating one another as enemies of the gospel until one clearly shows themselves to be one. An improper understanding of scripture is not the same thing as a wolf in sheep's clothing. But you gotta know that one standing firmly on an improper teaching or understanding in many cases will have the conviction or the surety to stand on that improper understanding until it is properly corrected. Until then, they will stand 10 toes down, 100% convicted in their wrongness. And I think if we're being honest as we should be, I think we have all erred in this way at some point in our Christian life. I know that I've been guilty of this. I've been corrected many times with the truth of the scripture. And I submit that we need to learn that when we're seeking truth and truth is revealed to you and you confirm its validity with scripture, there is nothing to be prideful about in learning the correct teaching of scripture. But I'm gonna say this, a lie sounds amazing until the truth shows up. A false gospel seems incredible until the real gospel comes on the scene. And this is where grace for one another is important to carry. Just remember that the one you claim to believe in also died for the ones who put a hole in his side and ask that they be forgiven because they did not know. And many of us claim to have within us the spirit of Christ. However, one of the fruits of the spirit is macrothumia, which is patience. Yet we jump down each other's throat the first chance we get when we see that someone doesn't understand something as thoroughly as we think we do. 
Where is macrothumia when you are dealing with others? Like we see the sins of another person or another believer and we're quick to proclaim to them that we gotta keep God's commandments. If you love the Lord, you will keep his commands. Not understanding ourselves that we're just repeating what we've been taught and don't really even understand what that means or how it applies to the church. I got another video specifically on this, so check that out later if you can as well. Anyway, so we pair it to them in our ignorance, you better keep them commandments or you're going to find yourself burning up in a hot lake somewhere near the Chattahoochee River. Knowing good and heck well, we ourselves can't perfectly keep not one of the commandments, let alone keep 10 of the commandments written on tablets of stone, and certainly we can't keep 613 commandments. But for some reason, we think God is gonna give us an A for effort for trying, even though we know without a shadow of a doubt that we're not even close to being more righteous than the Pharisees, and that we could never inherit the kingdom of heaven on our own filthy rags righteousness you just sinned last night holy roller you just sinned again this morning big dog yet you find yourself in the esteemed position of somehow being privileged to direct someone else to focus on their sins while you get to focus on the savior and i don't know about you but no that don't even sound right to me so we gotta be patient with each other my brothers and my sisters because there is none good but God. Let the Holy Spirit do his job and convict those of the world of their sin and need for a savior and also to bring the believer into all truth. Let us then spread the good news, the gospel of the one who died for our sins according to the scriptures, was buried and rose again on the third day according to the scriptures for our justification. The good news of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, who saves from God's wrath all those who believe on him according to his grace. Anyway, I hope that this message helps someone. Shalom.